Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Lena. I'm currently working as a high school teacher in my gap year prior to entering medical school this fall of 2021. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to choose a major as a pre-medical student, what are the courses that you need to take that are mandatory, and what are some of the courses that are highly recommended to prepare yourself for medical school while in college. If you're curious about the courses I took or my GPA grades that I I've received, please check out an upcoming video that I will be recording about my application to medical school, including all of the information that I mentioned. Without further ado, let's begin. According to the data provided by AAMC, Association of American Medical Colleges, slightly more than half of the students who applied to medical schools majored in some sort of biological sciences. That includes biology, chemistry, or biochemistry. That totally makes sense because the requirements to complete these majors overlap significantly with the requirements to apply to medical school. However, that also means you do not have to major in the biological sciences to enter medical school. As long as you complete the pre-medical school requirements, you are good to go. I majored in neuroscience and behavioral biology and ethics. I took tons of classes in philosophy, religion, anthropology that are not related to medical school, but related to my interest, along with completing the pre-medical school requirements. And you could do it too. So now let's go ahead and start talking about what are the courses that are mandatory and highly encouraged for you to take as a pre-medical school student. So different medical schools have different requirements, but the basic general requirements are usually very similar across the board. The easiest way to know what the medical school course requirements are for a specific school is just to Google search the school of your dream plus the course requirements. Or you could use the AAMC MSAR tool to search for your medical school and look what their course requirements are. In this video, I'm going to go over all of the basic requirements that is safe to assume if you take all of these courses, you will fulfill the basic requirements for the medical schools across the board. The very first one is general chemistry, a year of general chemistry with the lab component. So that could be four quarters of general chemistry or two semesters of general chemistry. The second course is biology, also a whole year of biology, two semesters or four quarters. And it's usually with the lab component, eight credit hours in the American colleges. So third one is organic chemistry. Some of the schools require you to take one semester or half a year of organic chemistry. Some of the schools require you to take a full year of organic chemistry. This comes with the lab component. I also know some of the medical schools do not require organic chemistry at all. However, for the purposes of MCAT, the medical entrance exams, it's good to take at least one semester of organic chemistry because there are organic chemistry content on the MCAT. Then there is English. So the credits for English classes usually varies across medical schools. Some of the schools require you to take one semester of English. Some of the schools require you to take three semesters or three classes of English. The purpose of the medical schools requiring English classes is really making sure that you are writing and communicating effectively and that is usually for composition or grammar purposes. Generally, any courses in humanities or social sciences that are very writing extensive could fulfill this English requirement. I took classes in both religion and philosophy and they all counted towards this writing requirement or English requirement for medical school. And last but not the least, humanities, social sciences, and the behavioral sciences. And that includes psychology, philosophy, art history, and all that jazz. 
And last but not the least, there is the math and statistics. For math, there is the basic calculus. Some of the schools usually take AP credits for these math classes, such as statistics and calculus. However, most of the medical schools that I know do not take AP credits for the science requirements, such as biology, chemistry, because you need the lab component, and that's what the AP credits do not meet is the lab component of these classes. So I know some of the students using AP credits to exchange three credits of the chemistry or biology class and then taking just the lab component of the classes in college. So for the recommended sequences of taking all of these classes, it's usually recommended that you take general chemistry class prior to biology or organic chemistry, and the other sequences do not matter. If you think you have a really strong science background from high school or from early on, and you're set on going to medical school, feel free to double up on the biology and chemistry class. Classes. And if you're like me, who's not sure about going into pre-med during their first year, maybe start with general chemistry class and see how that class goes. And then you could ease in into biology and organic chemistry later on. So for the courses that are highly recommended or encouraged, these are either for MCAT purposes or from the websites of some of the medical schools or just for providing a strong foundation for medical school in general. I'm gonna divide this section into what I did and found useful, what I did and found not so useful, and what I heard was useful. For the classes that I did take and found useful for medical school, are biochemistry and also human physiology. Those two classes are considered upper level biology classes. Some of the medical schools really hope that their students take at least one or two classes in upper level biology. Uh, the reason I think that these classes were really useful is because they helped with my MCAT. So human physiology, learning about all of the organ systems and the homeostasis and all of those concepts concepts really helped me prepare myself for the MCAT and also the biochemistry, learning about glycolysis, TCA cycle, all of that provided me with a strong foundation for taking the MCAT later on. So for the classes that I did take and did not find so useful were psychology and sociology. Some of the medical schools recommend to take these sociology classes and psychology classes because they do provide you with a foundation to enter medical school and most importantly there is a section on psychology and sociology on the MCAT. However, taking the classes did not really help me prepare for my MCAT. I took psychology really early on in my college career. I believe it was first year and by the time I was taking the MCAT, I already forgot what I learned in these psychology classes. For sociology class, I took one sociology 101 class and one sociology of medical illness class. Both of them were really interesting and engaging content, however, they did not help me with the MCAT. Whatever concepts were examined on the MCAT were not really mentioned in my sociology classes. For the sociology of illness class, my college did provide this course. Some of the other colleges may provide similar course. If you do have the freedom in your schedule to take such a class, I think I would recommend it, but in terms of MCAT purposes, it's not very useful. So in my sociology of illness class, we read a book called The Spirit Catches You When You Fall Down. It's a really good read about medicine and how they're intertwined with different social factors. And lastly, some of the courses I heard that were really useful for preparing yourself for medical school and MCAT is genetics, molecular biology, and cell biology. They are super helpful for preparing you for MCAT from what I heard. And I think this is not because of the content itself, but rather in these upper level biology classes, you do get exposed to a lot of scientific biological literature and academic articles for you to read and that's what the majority of MCAT is about. Reading these short passages and extracting the important information
information and analyzing the important information. So the more scientific biological articles that you read, the more proficient you are with extracting the information and analyzing it and that helps with the MCAT. There will be more videos on my channel to come about how to prep for the MCAT, my MCAT schedule while working full time as a high school teacher, and tips for taking the MCAT. So please subscribe if you would like to see more. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and if you really enjoyed this video or you find this content useful. Please subscribe if you would like to see more tips or advice for pre-medical school students and follow along with my journey to medical school. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.